Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench. It's Gasparilla in Tampa, so let's make waves like a pirate with shape layers. All right, let's get right into this tutorial request. YouTube user LRZMRQ asked us to look into these Vimeo links to see this wave effect so that hopefully we could recreate it. So those two examples look like this. So this is what we're talking about, this wavy line right here. It's also a part of the transition and then a little bit of the background elements. If we look at the other reference, it has similar stuff in it. These are linked in the description below. I recommend you check them out because they're actually really good. All right, so let's see what we have. We were able to get it looking pretty organic. So how do we do that? Well, the secret's in this wave layer. So let's check that out and see how this is built. First, I'm going to turn this on. And then for some reason, this is black. So let's click one of these to make it yellow. Zoom out just so you can see what the shapes look like. So I just freehanded in some triangles. So you can see there's two different ones. But I started off with just one. And position is animated to help the wave move in the direction that we want it to go. All right, so let's go back. All right, so here's that path. Not actually using that stroke or that gradient fill. They were probably just applied at the end when I added a gradient fill to everything. Let's move down on the timeline a little bit so you can see what we have. All right, so I'm actually going to turn this second group off. Close that up. I'm going to leave these merge paths and offsets on. Otherwise, we won't see anything because our shape actually doesn't really cross this until those are applied. All right, so in this group, our first thing is zigzag. We're gonna have to change this depending on what size of shape that you build. But if we turn off this wiggle pass, the main idea is to get some nicely flowing sine wave stuff, kind of like our first tutorial. So when you apply that, this is gonna be corner. Set this to smooth instead. And then the next thing we're adding is a wiggle path. So this is gonna change it after the zigzag. So it's gonna wiggle that stuff a little bit more. We have the detail turned down really low to 0.5 and we have the size cranked up a bit. Points is also set to smooth instead of corner. We have a pretty low value for wiggles per second. It's at 0.3. And then we've changed the correlation a little bit. You can change this to get a different look. So let's leave that. It's kind of nice. All right. I don't have any of this temporal phase or spatial phase set up. And I don't have a random seed set on this one. In the looping version, I do have random seed set. Because what happens is if you add anything to this shape layer, or if you duplicate this shape layer, the way this looks will change. But if you explicitly set a random seed, it will always look the same way. All right. After that, we basically have the same thing set up in the other group. But things like random seed and wiggles per second are a little bit different. The correlation's a little bit different. The size, the detail, all of that kind of stuff. So let's turn that one back on. You can kind of see how they add together a little bit after we've made that change. So now what's with the rest of this stuff? If you've seen tutorial 55, Mo Beta Blobs, and also our previous blob tutorial, we're using a technique similar to that stuff. If you check in the description, you'll see there's actually a link under the Mo Beta Blobs tutorial to a tutorial by a French YouTuber and their channel is called Motion Cafe. And this is actually kind of a nicer way to do this so you can do it with shape layers. So it's kind of the same tutorial. I think of like, what is it, number three blobs? Where we basically like expand something out and then contract it back. We're going to do that with an offset path. So what we do is we merge paths so that we have like one path. And after you do that, if you don't see something for some reason, you're missing like a fill or something after that. In the blob tutorial, we basically offset out so that every shape joins with the other ones and kind of blobs up. And then we offset it back by the same amount. So we keep our same size. But in this case, I wanted to be extra blobby for lack of a better word. So I expanded out a lot and only contract it back a little bit. In this case, 472 to 321. Just in case, make sure these are set to round joins so that we keep it rounded. And that's basically it. You can have strokes on this if you want to. But I chose to do a gradient fill just so that I could have this kind of fade in and have another one come in. So as you can see, it's a pretty easy effect to do. And it actually has quite an organic look. If you couple it with a nice like gradient fill, you can actually have it kind of fade off as it gets away from the edge, which is what we're doing here. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions or even a request, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.